start by thanking AFF and the Pope Center for putting this panel together. Uh, hopefully it'll be nice and informative for everybody. Um, when, you th when you think about bubbles, the, the defining characteristic is unsustainable growth. Uh, so when we look at higher ed, where do we see unsustainable growth? And I, I really think there's two, two places that, that, that this could happen. Uh, the first is enrollment, and the second is in cost. Okay, so let's, let's take them one at a time. So assuming costs are fine, uh, you know, costs are going to increase 6% here for, you know, another three decades. Um, and let's, let's think about what that does to enrollment. Um, unless benefits are increasing at the same rate, or unless benefits are increasing enough, uh, continually higher costs are going to imply that fewer people should be going to college. And yet, over time, we're sending more and more people to college. So that's one, that's, uh, that's one problem. Uh, but let's, let's assume that benefits are increasing by enough that, uh, that it's still optimal to send a lot of people to college. Let's look at what actually happens when we do send them. Currently, we've got a graduate, a six-year graduation rate, and this is for first-time, full-time students, so your traditional college-based students, of 58%. Once they graduate, if they graduate, the percent of college graduates that have a job that requires a college degree is only 60%. Now this, this is pre-recession, uh, those numbers are, are worse now. Um, and if you put that together, that means that for every 100 students that start college, 58 manage to graduate, and then 35 actually have a degree that they use at their job. Not necessarily a degree in chemistry that they are now a chemist, but just a degree in chemistry and they have a uh, job somewhere else. So one third of students are able to that we send to college are able to graduate from college and use their degree in some kind of meaningful sense. This immediately raises the question of: Are we wasting a lot of resources sending the other two thirds to college? Um, because if we if only one third are able to, to finish and, and use their degree, that's not uh, that's not a great statistic. Here. Okay, so let's change gears for a minute and talk about costs. I think the uh, the cost escalation problem in higher ed is even worse than the than the enrollment problem. And there's two there's really two reasons to think that cost the the increase in costs is, is unsustainable. The first is that online as online teaching technology improves, uh, we're going to see dramatic reductions in the cost of, of producing a, a college level degree. Um, you, you can't read the newspapers these days without reading another story about some massive online. Um, and that's great, that's good. Um, but we're a few years or maybe decades even um, from, from that really, really taking effect. Uh, but we don't need to wait that long because the second problem we have is that colleges right now are being paid a lot more than they're spending on the education of their students. There's a, uh, there's a professor out in California by the name of Bob Samuels. And he did some calculations on how much public u research universities spend on actually educating their students. And it's only $1,500 a year per student. So they spend, to, to put a professor in front of students for a year costs, costs colleges $1,500. They charge an average of $7,000. This is for uh, public research universities. And they get another $8,000 an average from the state funding. So they're bringing in $15,000 for every student that, that is enrolled. And it only, it is only costing them $1,500. So they're paying 10 times as much as it costs them to, uh, to produce this degree. Um, you, you can throw in uh, other valid costs. So that, that's just talking about professor salaries. Uh, there's things like libraries and classrooms and, and registrar offices. Uh, those, are, those are valid educational costs. And even when you include those, uh, you, you don't change the conclusion. Colleges are still being paid more than they're spending educating their students. Uh, that's not a sustainable solution. Um, and this is, this is extremely clear when you look at large lecture classes. So for a large lecture class, it costs the school about $60 a student. The, the colleges are charging hundreds or even thousands of dollars to each one of those students in that class. There's a huge difference between what it's costing the university and what they're being paid. Uh, and that's not going to be sustainable in the long run. Uh, now we've got, one, one thing that's kind of interesting about this is that if you look at the potential enrollment bubble and the potential cost bubble, as the case for one of them gets stronger, the case for the other one weakens. So if we, uh, if we take uh, costs and say that those are unavoidable, 
that makes the enrollment bubble more likely because as costs continue to increase, plus it doesn't make sense for as many people to go to college. But if price can be brought down to somewhat equal to, to what it costs to, to deliver a degree, all of a sudden it makes sense to send a whole lot more students to college. Uh, so that means that the enrollment bubble goes away if we can, uh, if we can pop the cost bubble. Uh, and that's ultimately what I want to see happen. Uh, I'm pretty optimistic uh, about education, uh, not to be confused with what colleges do. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but I really think if we, if we get educational products out there that reflect what it actually costs to produce and, and deliver these things, um, then, then we'll really pop the cost bubble and all of a sudden we won't need to worry about enrollment at all. Because if it's only costing you $60 uh, uh, for, to enroll in a class, you don't really need to worry about, uh, about the cost uh, too much. Um, but it's not really clear which one's gonna, gonna win out because colleges have been very successful so far in keeping up with the cost bubble. Um, but that's my hope.